as Twyman quickly became one of Wisconsin's most wanted. It doesn't take a sophisticated assessment tool to see this person is dangerous. Go, yo, Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, before we get into this video, please make sure you head on down to Instagram and follow us on our official Instagram page at hookah anonymous underscore. All right, we're able to be a little more explicit, a little more uncensored, and share content freely without running the risk of having our channel terminated. So, once again, make sure you head on down to Instagram and follow us on our official Instagram page at hookah anonymous underscore. All right, now let's get into what you guys came here to see. Now, 25 year old Kenneth Twyman is a three time most wanted fugitive from Milwaukee with multiple felonies, including murder, that seem to be untouchable when it comes to staying incarcerated. Now, his most serious charge happens to be a murder charge that occurred in April of this year. Now, after being hunted down by U.S. Marshals for going on the run, police thought they finally had one of Milwaukee's most dangerous criminals for good after a hefty balance of over $100,000 was set as his bail. But to their surprise, the unthinkable would happen after someone actually posted his bail, which will eventually set the accused killer free on November 22nd. Now, make sure you don't forget to like this video to spread awareness to news such as this, as well as keeping people informed and protected. Now, let's take you guys back to where it all started. Now, in September of 2018, Milwaukee charged Kenneth with leading police on a high-speed chase, causing a crash that injured four people. Those four people consisted of a mother and her three little children. Now, after the crash, he ran off into the night, but forgot a few things in the car that would be used as evidence to charge him in a future case. Now, he left behind a half a pound of marijuana, cocaine, heroin, three digi scales, a gun, ammunition, and seven flip phones. Now, one of those phones, they found a troubling video of Kenneth driving a Nissan Altima and shooting a modified handgun out the window randomly into the air. Now, anyone who was outside at the time or even inside their house could have been struck due to the negligence and carelessness of Kenneth Twyman. Now, at that point, he quickly became most wanted by Wisconsin. Now, in December of 2018, he was tracked down by U.S. Marshals in Arkansas and taken into custody. The judge set a cash bail of just $3,000 and within just a few months, Twyman posted bail and was released back onto the streets. And while on bail, he'd been in and out of jail and even skipped court a few times, so the U.S. Marshals were sent to capture him yet again in January of 2022. This time, he was found at his mother's apartment in Milwaukee. In typical Twyman fashion, after surrendering, the Marshals found a 9mm handgun, 17-round magazine, 2 pounds of marijuana, and almost $5,000 they took from his pants pocket at the time of his arrest. Now this time, his lawyer asked for bail of only $1,000, saying that Kenneth isn't employed and that's all he can afford at the time. However, the judge wasn't buying it. And he set a cash bail of $7,500, in which a man who described himself as a family friend posted four days later. Now on April 14th, just three months after posting bail, this is where Kenneth will receive a charge worse than any other charge he has been hit with in the past, which is murder. Now, Kenneth will be hit with a murder charge after reports say he got into an altercation with Tavon Luckett when he would go into the Quick Mart for pizza rolls. A witness says when Tavon was coming out of the Quick Mart, he noticed Kenneth and yelled, Kenny. As they came into contact with each other, the witness says they even shook hands right before Kenneth was seen holding a gun and proceeded to shoot Tavon Luckett in the neck and chest area. He then hopped into a vehicle and drove away, all in broad daylight. Now, on April 21st, a homicide warrant was issued for Twyman, and the next day, April 22nd, he appeared in court for an unrelated case via Zoom from his lawyer's office. They say the prosecutor knew about this homicide warrant, and when the deputy chief district attorney, Kent Laverne, was asked why nothing was done about it, well, he said nothing. Now, Luckett's mother, Lakeisha Pierce, and his grandmother, Mary, points fingers at the bail reform system in Milwaukee as the reason her son and grandson is now gone. 
They feel that if Kenneth was never on the streets, Tavon would still be alive because at the time of his murder, Kenneth Twyman had four outstanding warrants along with other open cases. As grandmother simply states that the cash bail system has failed them, but the horror has yet to end. Now we've learned that Kenneth has been captured for the third time by U.S. Marshals in just four years back on July 6th. He was caught after another warrant was put out for his arrest. This time, a Milwaukee County judge set bail at $100,000. Now he doubled the bail in his other pending cases. With $12,500 already paid, he would need another $112,500 to get out. And just when they thought they stopped Milwaukee's most dangerous fugitive, they were sadly mistaken. Now just weeks later on, August 5th, Someone posted more than $100,000 to set him free yet again, but first he had to settle a couple of warrants in Waukesha. That someone is Richard Stulo. Richard Stulo is a 51-year-old business owner who has a criminal history of his own, being a convicted ex-drug trafficker. Now He now owns a construction company called Colt Construction, but back in 2018, police raided a house he was staying at in Milwaukee and found nine firearms, digi scales, three pounds of marijuana and more than $101,000 in cash. Now he's currently on probation and when asked by his probation officer about the hefty bail, he explained that he doesn't even know Kenneth Twyman. He know Twyman's family from church and from a landscaping business where he met Twyman's father. A signed loan agreement between Richard and Twyman's parents shows that he's charging Twyman's family an extra $10,000 for giving them the $100,000, totaling up to $110,000 that they'll have to pay him back. Now, this information was provided by Richard's probation officer. Although he has his own construction business, some people say that it's still a little sketchy and believe the money is still drug related, despite Richard saying he has no affiliation with Kenneth Twyman. Now, Court Commissioner David Herron says, quote, this is odd that I have someone who qualifies for public defender representation, but is literally sitting on $125,000 worth of cash. Now, although Kenneth Bell was paid, like we stated earlier, before Twyman could go free, deputies transferred him to Waukesha to settle a pair of warrants. Now, on Monday, August 8th, prosecutors revealed that recent jailhouse phone calls tipped them off to Twyman's intentions of heading to California or Las Vegas after he is released which means he's already planning on going on the run again, but this time they caught him speaking about it on the prison phone. Now in October, Twyman pleaded guilty to the Waukesha charges and the judge sentenced him to 180 days in jail, which come out to about six months. He will be incarcerated with this trial starting in just four months. However, Twyman received 94 days of credit for the time he already served. Plus, he's being given 45 days of good time credit for his behavior in jail. So because of that, he's due to be released November 22nd, two days before Thanksgiving. Now, everything was looking good for Kenneth until a quick sudden change popped up. Not only did David Herring up Twyman's bail at $200,000, but federal authorities have placed a hold on him as well. They plan to hold him without bail, pending drug and gun charges in the Eastern District of Wisconsin. Also, white boy Richie, aka Richard Stulo, has come forward after stating his business started tanking due to the loan he gave Twyman's family and the public outrage that it has caused. Now, in a letter he wrote to the court, he said, quote, I feel Kenneth Twyman is a flight risk. Bad publicity is hurting my reputation, and I regret posting this bail, so we asked to get his money back. And ironically, Judge Ellen Brostrom responded by saying, quote, I will grant Mr. Stulo's request. Now, the reversal came as a surprise to both the defense and prosecution, so it's looking like Twyman would definitely be sitting in jail until his state homicide trial, which is scheduled for March of 2023. Now, here's my thoughts on this. First and foremost, I want to know the motive behind the killing um, with Tavon because the eyewitness said that they shook hands and everything. They said that the victim actually yelled, at, uh, yelled out Kenneth's name, pretty much like to say what's up. You know, they shook hands in the whole nine yards. So what made him shoot him in his neck and chest? You know, what was the motive behind it? We still have yet to know that. Um, did something happen? Were there enemies in the past? Did some snake stuff happen? I don't know. Maybe Kenneth was on drugs or something. He did it. Cut. I don't know. He just did it in broad daylight. It doesn't make sense to me. You shaking somebody's hand. He actually acknowledged you first as you was walking away. And then you come back and shoot him in his neck and chest. You know, um... 
I know the parents of the victim is probably like, if he would have never called them back, he would still be alive, you know? But he probably called them because he felt that they were cool with each other. So, I don't know, man. Um, when it comes to the bail reform, do I agree that certain crimes shouldn't be eligible for cash bail on the spot? Yes. You know, I agree that certain crimes shouldn't have no type of cash bail, and murder is actually one of them. If you murder somebody, man, nine times out of ten, you're going to do it again. You know, um, that's in you. Not saying that we should hold people to that stature because people do change. However, a situation like that where the man fled about, what, two or three times prior to being caught, what does that tell you? You know, um, and like the, the, the grandmother said, he was already on, he had four warrants. You know, he was already captured by the U.S. Marshals more than once prior to him shooting and killing the Tavon kid. So why would they let him back out? I have no idea. Especially seeing a, a video of him on his phone where he's just randomly just shooting into thin air as he's driving for no reason. That man, has, he might have a mental problem more than anything. You know? So I think he definitely needs help as well. But if he's convicted nine times out of ten, he's going to spend the rest of his life in jail anyway. Now, um, when it comes to Richard Stulo, um, the guy who posted the bail, I think he got scared into his decision of taking his money back because the story about him and, and I don't know, giving the money, the loan, I think it's a little sketchy, but his probation officer actually, you know, vouched for him. So at the end of the day, we got to listen to it or whatever. It is what it is. But um, I think maybe he got scared into wanting to take his money back. Uh, once the community realized that he was behind the, the money and you know the news the, let me tell you <laughs> the law know exactly what they're doing they purposely put him on the spotlight like that which could be dangerous i don't understand why the news actually went and showed his face to the public letting it be known that he's the one that put up the cash bail because guess what what if um the victim's family wanted to retaliate or his friends or something you know things like that are supposed to be kept you know behind the scenes but you know the law got a weird way of working man it, it is what it is now um on the flip side i do find it kind of funny though that he was allowed to actually take his bail back so easily i'm not sure how the law works out there but i never heard of someone being able to take their bail back like that you know um usually once you pay a bail the person's supposed to be released and that's just that or if you pay the bail and he's not released that's just on them but you're not supposed to be able to get your money back i i don't know you know now bond i've heard of um it being taken back if i'm not mistaken but you gotta go through a whole process uh certain percentage still go to the bail bondsman if i'm not mistaken i'm not too sure but i don't know it's a little sketchy but it is what it is man y'all jump in the comments let me know y'all feel about this this is the story of kenneth twyman and um if you didn't know about him now you know um we definitely gonna keep you guys updated Y'all jump in the comments, let me know how you feel. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. And remember, as long as you keep on watching, I'm going to keep on dropping. And I'm out.